Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss an important reagent which is used in uh, several synthetic modification, particularly in organic chemistry. So we are going to discuss about uh, lead tetraacetate, a common reagent which has several applications. And because of the uh, variety of application, this reagent is an important reagent, particularly in organic chemistry, like I have mentioned. So this reagent is also known as Craggy reagent. So because a lot of work has been done by this scientist, so based on his honor, this is also called Craggy reagent. As far as general feature is concerned, so this reagent is a common oxidizing reagent, and it's a powerful oxidizing reagent. So we know what are oxidation and what could be the consequence of some oxidation reaction. So this is first thing which we have to remember. And the second thing is of course uh, when it comes to uses or its handling, then one should remember that this reagent is toxic because lead is there and uh, the nature is hygroscopic. So it can absorb moisture from the atmosphere. So once it uh, absorb moisture, then it also turns brown. So this also we have to remember. Uh, what I mean by is that is the reaction, uh, this reagent, we have to make it airtight. We have to, you know, once we are using this reagent, only then you should open the bottle. Otherwise we need to close the bottle all the time. And if you are reading, using this reagent, then of course we should use hood for the reaction purpose. Since the reaction is, the reagent is toxic. So that's why we have to follow the instructions also. So for preparation, we should add lead, red lead, PV304, to a mixture of acetic acid and acetic anhydride. So once we are adding this red lead, PV304, at minus 70 degrees centigrade, so we can prepare this lead tetraacetate. So, so synthesis is easy, but uh, there are uh, some things which we have to remember, especially handling. All right. So as far as the application part is concerned, so like I have mentioned uh, that for every reagent, we have to know the basic outline of application. What could be the uh, what could be the application of some particular reagent? We already talked about eight different reagent, and we have discussed the application of those reagent in my previous lesson. So today we are particularly going to discuss this uh, lead tetraacetate. The first and uh, most important application, like uh, I have mentioned, that this is a common oxidizing agent so it can used for the oxidation of alcohol so if it is primary alcohol then we can get uh, aldehyde if it is secondary alcohol then we can get ketone so this is the common application of this reagent so one important thing which we have to also remember is that the over oxidation of carboxylic acid is not absorbed means uh, reaction stops till carbonyl stays, it do not undergo further oxidation. So that is a useful, uh, you know, uh, useful part, which is related with this lead tetraacetate. Uh, that's why it is uh, highly useful. So here we have mentioned two examples. First one is pentanol. Once we are oxidizing this pentanol in lead tetraacetate using pyridine as a base, then we are getting corresponding aldehyde. Similarly, if you are oxidizing this cinnamyl part, cinnamyl alcohol, then we are getting this corresponding aldehyde. So these are the two application, actually two examples uh, where oxidation of alcohol is shown. So if we discuss the oxidation of one to diol, then it is very interesting as compared to monohydric alcohol, because in case of one to diol, one to diol is there, then oxidative cleavage takes place. So that is interesting. And we'll talk about this uh, mechanism in other respect but uh, this is something we have to always remember that once we are treating any kind of diol with lead tetraacetate then uh, cleavage oxidative cleavage between carbon carbon bond takes place via cyclic intermediate and of course uh, uh, the experiment shows that cis 1 2 di uh, diol exhibit greater reactivity as compared to trans 1 2 diol and this is because of the cyclic intermediate which is formed in cis 1 2 diol particularly so we'll also talk about it. So we can perform the reaction in any organic solvent. And if we have more than two hydroxy group, three or more hydroxy group, then the intermediate or middle carbon is converted into formic acid. That is also we, we should remember. All right. So like, let's see the example. Uh, these are the two examples of dihydric alcohol. So you can see here, this is dihydric alcohol. And we know that once we are treating this dihydric alcohol, then oxidative cleavage takes place between this carbon-carbon bond. 
and this bond will give oxidized product and this will also give oxidized product so we are getting corresponding aldehydes from this substrate similarly if we are using a substrate having different functionality of course ester is here hydroxy group is here and we are treating with let acetate then we know that it will exclusively react with this part and if it is uh, dihydric alcohol then it will cleave this oxidative carbon carbon bond will be cleaved and this bond since it is alcohol then it will convert into corresponding carbonyl compound so this is we have to remember all right so as far as the mechanism is concerned then uh, the first step is since we know that oxygen has a lone pair of lepton actually it, it has two lone pair of lepton so it can easily attack on lead so eliminating this acetate so once acetate is eliminated then this intermediate is formed and we know that uh, this hydrogen can be abstracted by this acetate ion which will give rise to this intermediate once it is formed then we have second OH second hydroxyl group side by side so this OH group also attack on this lead eliminating acetate ion and of course this cyclic intermediate is formed that is very important so once this cyclic intermediate is formed then it can lead to you know reorganization of bond and cleavage of this bond takes place in this fashion and it will give rise to corresponding oxidized product and lead diacetate is the side product which is formed so this is the general mechanism and this is the mechanism where cis diol is treated we are treating cis diol with lead tetracetate to get the corresponding oxidative cleaved product and the trans uh, the trans hydroxy group has some different mechanism but uh, as i have mentioned that the rate of the reaction in case of cis is higher as compared to trans because of the cyclic intermediate which is formed in the solution but when we treat this uh, trans diol this is the trans diol so first step is common here up to here is common but the second step here is the you know this bond will leave here and this oxidative cleavage takes place after eliminating this bond we are of course getting the oxidized product so the second step in case of diol is different once we are treating this trans diol with the tetrastate the product is same but the mechanism is somewhat different that we have to remember all right so the second application of this reagent lead tetraacetate is cyclization of saturated alcohol and this is very interesting because once we are treating an alcohol so this is a saturated alcohol having delta hydrogen so if we have a delta hydrogen atom in the substrate and we are treating with lead tetraacetate then it will give cyclic compound cyclic ethers are the products which are formed similarly if we have this kind of compound then also it can give rise to cyclic ether type of compound with lta lead tetraacetate the possible mechanism is here uh, just for information that once we have this oh group and we know that the first step is always common if it is alcohol then the first step will be attack of this lone pair of oxygen on the lead eliminating this acetate ion and it will give rise to this species so under thermal or photochemical condition this intermediate a will further this o pb bond will cleave homolytically so it will give rise to oxygen radical means intermediate b and that intermediate will further you know drive this bond delta hydrogen carbon bond to cleave homolytically to give rise to alcohol and this alkoxy radical this is our intermediate c and once this intermediate is formed then this intermediate we also react with this uh, let triacetate radical to give this intermediate d and after that this carbon lead form the carbon lead bond this bond cleaves heterolytically giving carbocationic species here the carbon and the last step is the attack of this oxygen lone pair on this uh, electrophilic carbon to give the product cyclic product so this is the possible mechanism that you can easily understand so this is the second uh, important application which is associated with this reagent let it acetate the third part is of course also interesting and this is the decarboxylation of carboxylic acid so once we are treating any substrate having carboxylic acid with let tetraacetate then decarboxylation reaction takes place and it will give rise to uh, corresponding product the mechanism is very obvious that first step is almost common uh, what we have discussed in the previous one so first step is common it will give rise to this intermediate and this acetate will abstract the hydrogen giving rise to this neutral species 
But the second step is interesting because once we have hydrogen here, which is attached adjacent uh, to this uh, functionality, then this hydrogen will leave and the bond will reorganize. And this reorganization, you can see here, decarboxylation reaction takes place. So CO2 will be eliminated and rest of the reagent is of course eliminated. So we'll get the product. So this is our possible mechanism. And we have, of course, if we have similar substrate, having carboxylic acid and we are treating with let tetraacetate this is the carboxylic acid functionality and we are treating with let tetraacetate then the first step will be common as i mentioned but in the next one as i have mentioned that uh, this co2 will be eliminated and the corresponding oxidized product will be obtained of course plus co2 will be here also so that could be easily understood so this is the third application of let tetraacetate but one thing which we have to always remember is that whenever we are dealing we are treating any carboxylic acid having double bond here by double bond and we are treating with let acetate then they will give rise to lactone species and this is also important re important reaction we can see because once we are treating only carboxylic acid moiety having carboxylic functionality and we, do, we are not having this double bond then simple decarboxylation reaction takes place but we have, if we have this double bond, then the outcome of the product is different. And this is also useful, lactones. How it happens? First step is common, as I mentioned. Up to here is common, up to here. But here, if we are double bond, then this double bond will attack. Actually, we can, we can represent this bond like this. This double bond will attack here on the oxygen and it will ultimately reorganize to give rise to this PBOAC, this is let diacetate and OAC. And of course, our lactone is palm. But since this bond is migrating here, carbocationic species here, positive charge will be generated. So, AAC, this bond may attack here and it can give rise to these products. So, these are the examples of uh, fourth example of let tetraacetate in a where carboxylic acid functionality is there and double bond were also present. The fourth application of this reagent is also important because once we have carbon, carbonyl derivative, car, uh, carbonyl derivatives like ketone we have, then with let tetraacetate, they will give alpha, alpha acetoxylated product. So that is also interesting. So once uh, we have this uh, alpha hydrogen is there, then it will give rise to OAC will be incorporated at the alpha position. Similarly, if we have this region, then also this substrate, then we have also uh, this product. So this is also obvious. Fifth one is the dehydrogenation. So we know that dehydrogenation means elimination or removal of hydrogen. So once we are using, once we are treating some reagent, particularly uh, if we are treating aliphatic amine substrate with this letter triacetate, then it will give rise to cyanide the hydrogens will be is eliminated and this will give to cyanide and if we have a compound like this is a compound for four dash dihydroxy biphenyl then they will give rise to quinones because we know that if dehydrogenation yeah dehydrogenation takes place using this letter triacetate then this bond will migrate here this will move here and then this bond will migrate here. Around this can also move here and then this can also move here to give thing cons corresponding phenome. All right. So these are the several application of uh, let tetraacetate and uh, these are the all are the very useful synthetic transformation. So first one is once we are treating with alcohol, we can get the corresponding carbonyl compound, corresponding aldehyde or ketone we can obtain and if we are treating let tetraacetate with saturated alcohol having delta hydrogen then we are getting cyclic compound once we are treating with carboxylic acid then we are getting generally a decarboxylated product but if we have double bond which is adjacent to this carboxylic functionality then we are getting lactone the fourth application is we can do acetoxylation of alpha alpha carbonyl derivative using this reagent. And last one is dehydrogenation reaction can be carried out. 
and we can prepare cyanide and of course we can prepare this kind of phenols also from this kind of alcohols so these are the five application of lead tetraacetate and i hope the lecture will help you to learn the importance of this lead tetraacetate in organic chemistry particularly so next we will talk about uh osmium tetraoxide thanks for watching